This is a stupid, simple scud pattern that had been sitting in my box for years, dormant. I took it out last season and it performed. Hello everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my YouTube channel and to my fly tying bench. Today I'm going to tie you the Fuzzball Scud, a stupid, simple, suggestive scud pattern intended to imitate tiny, high allele or immature gamma scuds. And this is a pattern I hang static or near static under an indicator. Yes, I know, you're supposed to fish scud patterns with slow sinking lines, usually a brisk one to three inch pull to attract attention. That's my typical way. But there are times fish want their food hanging stationary or hardly moving at all. We got to remember we don't always feed our flies to them how we want to, them to eat them. We feed them or should feed them how the fish want to eat them. So join me at my bench. I'll take a few minutes. It won't take long. Let's tie a fuzzball scud. So let's tie the fuzzball scud. Into the vise I've got a Daiichi 1530 number 12. You could tie this smaller too as a 14. You could also tie it on a jig hook if you wished as well. I've also slid on a head turner bead, tungsten head turner bead. These are a teardropped bead with a hole at the bottom. And I've slid the bead onto the shank so that the, con, the, the concave side of the bead pushes forward over the hook eye. And this allows this fly to be fish balanced when you attach the fly to your leader, or tippet rather, using a clinch knot. For the um, thread, I'm going to use a, a fluorescent glow bright number fly, sorry, glow bright number five. And uh, you could also use any fluorescent tying thread you wish. This just makes the, gives the fly a hot spot at the end, a little bit of a traction to stand out in a crowd of scuds down there. So we're just going to get this started. Trim away our excess. Cover the shank with the glow bright. This will also radiate through the dubbing that we're going to use on this as well. We just got that tied down. Bring the tying thread forward again and open turns. And again, we can use this opportunity to make sure that that bead is tucked tight against the hook eye, or the back of the bead rather. Just going to come forward a little bit. I'm going to put a little flash tail on this, and that consists of pearlescent crystal flash. So I've got three strands here. I'm just going to tie them on. I've got a majority trailing out the back of the tie-in point. Just get a couple of wraps and then I take all this that's hanging all over the place here and I'm just going to gather it all up, tuck it back over itself and bind it down to turn those three strands into six. Just go down the hook bend ever so slightly and come in and trim them like a short, this is just a short stubby little subtle flash tail. And then the next step, we're going to tie in a, a rib using some extra small gold wire. So we're just going to lay this against the near side of the shank, like so, and secure this right along the length to keep our body nice and smooth and to make sure we've really got a good purchase of that slippery wire so it doesn't pull out. And then the body is... You could use a rabbit, a hare's ear, um, an olive, tan, or ice dub. This is light olive ice dub. We're going to use this, and we're just going to literally pull off a little pinch, kind of remix it a little bit, and then we're going to move our tying thread back down just before the bend of the hook, and then I'm just going to moisten my fingers a little bit and just twist this dubbing right around that glow bright floss and just form a very slender uh, dubbing needle. It doesn't be, have to be tack, sorry, packed super tight like you would with a, a dry fly but we just want to make sure we've got that on there and just keep your dubbing noodle nice and short. We can always add more dubbing later and you notice I always keep the uh, very this part of the thread exposed. Um, this allows me to um, get my dubbing needle started right where I want it. I'm not in a situation where I have to make my best wrap as my first first wrap. I can sort of walk into it. And then I'm just going to wind forward. 
and uh, one turn right next door to the other. I seem to have timed that perfectly. That never happens very often. So I've got a little body on there. I can come in a little bit if I want and just uh, roughen it a bit to get some of those fibers out. And then the next step is we're going to tie in a, a contrasting hackle. You could use um, olive or, uh, in this case, burnt orange grizzly, just to give it that fly a little bit of orange hue to it to suggest perhaps a pregnant scud or an infected scud. And we're just going to tie this in. Um, I've left a little bit of the uh, stem exposed. We'll just get that tied in right behind the bead, a couple of wraps, like so. And we're going to have a, a set of hackle pliers handy to act as a weight uh, when we tie off the hackle. So I've just got those nice and close. And we're just going to put a couple of wraps right behind the bead, like so. And then nice open wraps, if anything, under Palmer the fly as opposed to over Palmer. So you get that... Um, body shining through so I got four to five wraps I'm going to come in with my hackle pliers and off camera I'm just hanging them at the tip section of the hackle so it acts as a weight and then we're just going to come through with our wire and use our wire to lock this in place just like you do a little woolly bugger or in this case it's like a little beadhead woolly worm and we're just going to wind that through and open turns and what this doing is securing the the hackle all the way along so it'll, it'll take quite a mauling because the fish basically has to break every wire segment in order for this fly to unravel. And we're just going to tie that off like so. A couple of wraps over the top. One in front. Take our thumbnail, pull and twist. Come in with our scissors and just nip that hackle right out of there. And then we're just going to spin the uh, Glowbrite, uh, sorry, the bobbin counterclockwise to flatten the wraps. Moisten my fingers a little bit, come in, and I'm going to put a little bit of, before I whip finish, a little bit of super glue onto that glow bright. Hold everything back, and we're using the glow bright here to act to build up a nice fluorescent, vibrant hot spot. Just like that, a couple wraps around gets that cement in with a glue in and then probably three to four turns is ample just come in snug right up again you can build that this hot spots a little oversized because we do want it to stand out and then all we need to do at the end is we can come in and kind of roughen this up pull some of that dubbing out get the hackle all swept back and again it's a suggestive pattern um, and we've got a few errant dubbing fibers here. It probably doesn't mean anything, but we're all being a little fastidious as fly tires. But that's it. That is the fuzzball. That's what it looks like. Just a simple little fuzzball. Again, you can vary your colors. Dark olive, use olive dyed grizzly, um, whatever color grizzlies you want. But you can fish this cast and retrieve like so. Or again, as I mentioned in the opening, if you attach your um, fl this fly to your tippet using a clinch knot you can uh, fish it in a balanced fashion so these head turner beads allow you to turn any hook into a balanced fly because of the way you tie it on and the way that bead pushes out over the hook eye so that's the fuzzball simple little suggestive scud add a few to your fly box